Here's what a reformed healthcare system will mean for you. First, no matter what you've heard, if you like your doctor or healthcare plan, you can keep it. If you don't have insurance, you'll finally be able to afford insurance. And everyone will have the security and stability that's missing today. Ah, uh, the way, way back machine. It can be so cruel. Of course, we know that those statements the president made, well, they've turned out to be false or lies. Call it what you will. People are not able to keep their plan. They're not able to keep their doctor. And if you don't have insurance, it's hard to enroll. We've all heard about the much mocked Obamacare website failings. Well, healthcare.gov, even when it was working, could only enroll 40 to 50,000 people, according to the Wall Street Journal. Beckett Adams from TheBlaze.com joins us now to talk more about this. Uh, Beckett, this is a, a boon to late night comedians and journalists. You have no shortage of problems to write about with this healthcare rollout. No, the whole thing has just been uh, from start to finish so far, one story after another. Uh, I've been joking with some colleagues that there's no such thing as a slow news day nowadays. You can get at least three or four stories out of it because the entire thing is so shot from the beginning. It was so clearly uh, not ready for prime time. They were so clearly unprepared to deal with it, and they are clearly unprepared to clean it up. I don't think they know what's going on. I don't think anybody knows what's going on. These numbers that have uh, been estimated from the Wall Street Journal, the official numbers are supposed to come out on Friday. This is the early estimates from the Wall Street Journal. These are, uh, I think, even below the White House's greatest fears. All right, let's go over some of the, uh, the bigger numbers. As we said, fewer than 50,000 people have successfully enrolled, but as that's happening, millions are losing and 52 million could lose or have lost old insurance plans. So that's the, if, if you can keep your plan, a promise that Obama made at least 24 times. And according to some reports, the White House has known for three years that plans would be dropped. What's the reaction uh, of the American people? Because I'm listening to a bit of talk radio, whether it's uh, Mark Levin, Glenn Beck, Sean Hannity, and I'm hearing people say, you know, we knew this was going to come, but I didn't know it would be this bad. I really think that the, uh, the president's oft-repeated claim, if you like it, you can keep it, People took him at his word and they believed what he was saying, but as uh, here we are now with literally millions of people receiving cancellation notices, I think people are waking up to it. I think that there is a, a growing desire to maybe not even have the full law uh, uh, repealed. Maybe there's, I, I do believe there's a sizable enough amount of people in the United States who would not be opposed to a law like Obamacare, but I believe the number of people who want at least the brakes put on it is growing. When your car is breaking down, when you see smoke coming out, you don't barrel on down the highway. You pull over on the shoulder and see what's wrong and try to fix it. I think there is a growing contingent of the United States that wants to pull over onto the shoulder and see what the hell is wrong with this thing. Whereas there are people in the, um, one of the unfortunate incidents was the government shutdown, which was a sizable number of Republicans wanted to at least tweak the, b the bill or, or, or delay it or define. There was this whole thing going on, and I think now we're seeing working against the Democrats. They fought back hard against that, using terms like arsonists, anarchists, terrorists, hostage takers. Uh, they were crazy. These people are holding a gun to the head of Americans because they want to delay this bill. But now here we are. People can't sign up. People are losing their insurance. And you have some vulnerable Democrats in red states who are now looking at this and saying, oh, maybe we shouldn't have said things like that because maybe we should actually delay this bill right now, but they, they can go they, ahead they and do that. They could be in trouble. Yeah. I, I want to play oh, a clip Oh, they absolutely of, are in of, trouble. Okay, I want to play a clip of Jay Carney because, uh, and this is from a couple of <laughs> days ago, and the reason for playing this is you mentioned people starting to, even Democrats starting to say, oh, well, maybe things aren't going as well and maybe pull the car off to the side of the road. Carney's not there yet, but listen to the resignation in his voice as he's questioned about how few people have actually signed up. We've addressed the issue of enrollment numbers. If, if the purpose is to point out, which I'm sure it is, that enrollment numbers uh, will be low for October, uh, take it from me, they'll be low in October. Uh, we've acknowledged that they were always going to be low, and that was even when uh, we did not expect the problems with the website that occurred. Now, that's a man that I think is just hating his job right now. There's a touch of resignation in there, don't you think? <laughs> That's a pitch man who's trying to sell a Pinto. That's what he sounds like. He knows what he's got. He's no, he knows the product's no good, but that's his job is to go out there and spin it in the best positive light. The guy has no place to go. I actually kind of feel sorry for him. I mean, he used to be a journalist at one point, but now it's, he's a pitch man. That's what he does. And uh, I understand the gig. Uh, he has no, there's nothing else he can say. It would be refreshing. 
Oh, sure, it would be refreshing if he went up to that podium one day and said, hey, guys, yeah, this is awful. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, obviously you can't. You can get fired, but All right. that's let, the nature of the game. Less than a minute to go. Put on your uh, prognosticator's cap. Let's look into the future. Where do you, Beckett Adams, see this going in the next couple months? Does it just the rollout continue to fall apart, or do the politicians that put it in pull it back? I think politicians that put it in pull it back because I think the rollout will continue to fall apart. They predicted that the site would be up and ready to go by December 1st. That looks increasingly unlikely. People still aren't able to sign up, but they are losing insurance. And I think there's going to be enough pressure coming now from the Democrats who are, in danger, uh, who are endangered in these red states who realize this isn't looking good with their constituents, like Democrats in North Carolina. I think there will be pressure to bear to maybe we should re rewrite something, fix it. Even former President Bill Clinton came out this uh, Monday and said the president needs to honor this promise. Maybe if he needs to rewrite the law, that seems like an awfully big wink, wink, hint, hint. You need to do something here. You need to do something fast. I think there will be a legislative fix or a delay. I, right. I do see that down the road. Beckett, thanks so much for joining us. Of course, you can get more Beckett Adams at theblaze.com.